Biotech getting a huge boost today following pharma giant Eli Lilly's $8 billion purchase of Loxo Oncology, the company's largest acquisition ever. The deal sending the IVB ETF, which tracks the biotech space, up more than 3% today, nearly 10% since the start of the year. Our own Jim Cramer sat down with a number of CEOs in the space at the annual J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference today. Here's what the Amgen CEO had to say about growth at its company. We have uh, four areas of big growth right now. We have cancer. Our cancer portfolio is growing. Cardiovascular uh, portfolio is growing. Bone health uh, and migraine. That's right. And then in addition, we're launching biosimilar medicines, which we expect to be an important source of growth for us as well. So we expect uh, to be a, a company that continues to grow handsomely on the top line and earnings per share over the long term. For the full interview with Jim Cramer and the CEO of Amgen, stick around for Mad Money. That's at the top of the hour. So the question here, should investors keep betting on biotech and the healthcare space? I mean, two major acquisitions in two weeks. Yeah, I think so. And that, this is not Monday morning quarterback stuff. This is something we've been saying on this test now for quite some time, probably since earlier in the spring. I do think valuations are still reasonable. In the case of like Eli Lilly, for example, which is about to make an all-time high, you know, if you like Lilly at 19 and a half times forward earnings, you got to love Pfizer at about 14 times. So I think there's room in the space. I think the fact that the president, I believe on Friday, tweeted about drug pricing and thereabouts, and you didn't have a knee-jerk reaction to the downside today, albeit on a decent tape. I think, I think that's, that's a good sign. M &A. That, that would be the only thing I would say is the negative, that it was on M&A that we saw the pops that we didn't see that knee-jerk reaction to the downside. And now when you have a Democratic-run House, you do get that ability for the bipartisanism to uh, really kind of flood the space with negative pricing again. Not to say that, to Guy's point, M&A won't trump it, but you, don't, you never know. Well, so healthcare, uh, first of all, has been kind of disappointing. If you look at a couple of bellwethers over the last few weeks, UNH has certainly, I, I would argue, been the best name in terms of both the quality of their earnings, their growth, and obviously the share price over the last two years. And that stock's been under a lot of trouble. Um, as Guy has pointed out, and he's been pointing out for a long time, the big pharma names have been very defensive. They're very defensive in a, in a volatile marketplace, not only because of their balance sheets, but because of their dividends. I would argue that IBB has outperformed uh, not only because of the M&A environment, but because, in fact, a lot of these stocks have extraordinary balance sheets and, and have been lagging for so long looking for catalysts. I mean, how long have we been talking about Gilead? Now, the problem here is that look at where Celgene traded down to and look even where you're getting taken out. You've lost a lot of money in that stock if you've been in that stock for a couple years, even on the takeout. The guys yeah. that actually win are really Bristol Myers, although even their but shareholders no, they don't didn't care. Win. Right. I, I know. I'm wondering, I know. do you want to be in the XBI? For the bio, for if you want to play the targets, so more and leverage to the smaller. More leverage, name. right? Because if you look at what happened, I mean, yeah. Bristol on the on the announcement of that deal, you know, that was not so much, right? Yeah, but I mean, that that wouldn't be a reason though for you to be invested in biotech, the takeout. If you believe they're not expensive as they are, right? Which is what what you believe. Plus, you want the kicker of the. Then M &A. you want the kicker, right? 